Welcome back. We're still talking about GI endoscopy with Dr. Professor Lao Shibiko. You spoke of uh, a rigid method in days gone by. So now we have a flexible type of, of endoscope. But I imagine that there are still some risks to using them. What are the risks that we should be aware of? Yes, uh, for any uh, procedure you do in the hospital, you, you have some risks. And um, so we have the risk of perforation, making a hole in the bowel um, while introducing the, the, uh, the scope or when you are performing certain procedures. You have a risk of bleeding. Um, if you perforate or make a hole, you can puncture a vessel. Uh, or if you take samples, you can, you can cause uh, bleeding and um, you have a risk of introducing infection. Those are the three uh, common uh, uh, risks. Um, but when I say common, they are not so common. Uh, but those risks are there. Those are the three And risks. are there any uh, methods to safeguard against these? Um, so when you are adequately trained for the procedure, uh, to perform the procedure, uh, that helps in reducing the risk of complications. Um, then when you uh, are performing uh, the procedure, you as, the, uh, uh, as a physician, you have to take the care to avoid such complications. And more importantly, when the complications do arise, it's important to identify it at that point and do something about it so that the complication doesn't get out of hand. So um, the, if, if you as a, a, a physician uh, say you've not had a complication, uh, you've not done enough. That is- You haven't met uh, hard cases. You've not <laughs> met hard cases, yes. Okay, I'm interested in something you were speaking to me about, you know, a while back, about manpower coming in from abroad. Talk to us about that a bit. So um, uh, I am a, one of uh, the directors of the uh, IFS uh, uh, group, and uh, one of our areas is... What's uh, IFS? IFS is the name of a, of a, of a company that uh, um, I'm a director of. Okay. And um, we have a, a, a portfolio that looks into healthcare. And uh, one of the areas that we're looking at is uh, how we can, in a structural way, facilitate repatriation of uh, uh, medical professionals and skills, more importantly. So uh, we, we currently have a list of 150 doctors who are interested in coming back to render services in one way or another. Uh, and um, so we are hoping that we can uh, find a structure uh, where they can fit in uh, so that we can, we can explore uh, areas of need and also evaluate the impact that we are making uh, uh, in, in, in these areas uh, in, 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 a, in a formal way. I suppose these doctors will be Nigerians? They are Nigerian doctors who, who, who have a passion to come back home. Okay, you keep speaking about structure. When you speak of structure, when it's fully in place, what do you envisage? What are you seeing? So, um, at the present moment, there are lots of people like myself that will come home and render services. And uh, it's, it's been difficult to know on a national scale what impact this is making. Uh, so part of what we are trying to do is, one, have a setup where we can guarantee that during the course of the year, uh, a particular service will be covered in a particular area of the country. Um, then uh, we hope that we can find uh, a public uh, 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 institution where we can render these services. Um, and the whole idea is not only render the services, help to transfer skills to our, our colleagues that are back home, and also uh, help with education of uh, uh, junior doctors and improve, uh, uh, increase their uh, aspiration into furthering their career in, in these areas. So hopefully uh, set up so-called centers of uh, excellence in particular fields of uh, healthcare that we have uh, uh, manpower to, to, to assist with. So um, that is uh, uh, what we are looking at and uh, we can't do this on our own. Um, we, we hope to engage industry 
uh, in supporting this uh, as well. That's a huge curriculum I'm looking at here. It, huge. it is huge, but uh, it is it is feasible. Uh, and uh, w one of the things that uh, is true about us as Nigerians and even uh, uh, businesses in Nigeria is they they every everybody has a sense of wanting to give back, but. How can we give back in such a way that what we are giving back is used appropriately is the concern. So most of my colleagues who want to come back home, the question is um, if we came back uh, and if we gave back, how can we benefit those who really need? You know, uh, so, so uh, these are the, 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 the questions out there that we hope to resolve with, with our setup. Are there some trends in, in modern endoscopy that we are not aware of, you know, let's let me say back in Africa, not just Nigeria. Um, that that's a big question. Um, in any, in any field of uh, healthcare, there's development on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, even in the first world. So uh, talk less of uh, um, Africa and uh, even Nigeria. So we are only scratching the surface of what. Uh, we can use endoscopy for. The, the whole uh, portfolio is minimal access and that is not just limited to endoscopy, that includes surgery like laparoscopy and stuff like that. So um, uh, we are just scratching the surface uh, in the country and uh, uh, we, we have some ways to go there. Thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck in your, your project. It's a big one. Thank you Thanks so much. much for coming on the Thank show. You Thank you for being with us and have a great day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.